right, so I'm gonna make a video here that maybe some people won't like, some people will like, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care, you're gonna get what you get. So I'm standing here at my Wood Miser LT50. Uh, I bought this back in 2012 after uh, I had ordered it after the hurricane had come through when they were building this particular building. Uh, so I ordered it. I paid over $50,000 for this unit and I really haven't put many hours on it. There's 120 on the ticker right now, which I'm sure Al's Sawmill Cinema is going to be like, what? <laughs> That's all you got on there? Because his mill came in just after my mill came in. So I think they went down the assembly line pretty much side by side. Uh, due to the lack of use of this thing, these things sitting in one spot, they just don't there's there's gremlins that happen to them uh there's corrosion that happens on well i'll show you where and i think al i know al has changed his but see this strip here there's you can't run the hydraulics unless your uh unless your head unit is all the way back here and then it makes contact here allowing to you to use your accuset or not accuset but your hydraulics there because this is a hydraulic mill you can't turn the log unless you're there you can't do you can't do much unless you're all the way back with this now it's it's really i mean that's really no big deal you get used to it and you do it but that's the way wood miser has it set up so the other day, I had problems with this. I, I think I thought I had explained it pretty well that when I was replacing the battery in this thing, which I had all kinds of problems to get this battery right, but I thought that I had explained it pretty well that when I put the battery in, I had shorted out the battery. I dead shorted the battery to the to the frame of the of the sawmill actually not the frame because the frame has paint on it and it wouldn't ground out the, through the paint but what had happened was where the nut well, i'll show you where the wing nut goes fast and it's right here there's a wing nut right in here that is not painted where the wing nut goes on so the the, the wrench had touched where that bolt or that stud was and it grounded out and caused problems right here. Now I'm gonna turn the key on. I'm not gonna start it, but I'm gonna turn the key on. My AccuSet, uh, well, let me go back a little bit. What had happened was when I did that, it burned out the diode and it caused damage to the resistor that goes to the solenoid that, let me, let me do this. Now I want you to listen, cause you'll hear it. You hear that click? Okay, so that click in there wasn't clicking anymore. Uh, what that click is, is a solenoid that when you turn your key on, it turns on, it hits that solenoid, allowing the hydraulics to work. And it's on all the time. The resistor and the diode. A diode will only let electricity go one way. It's like a check valve for electricity. A resistor will only allow a set number of volts to go through it. So, and this is according to Doug at Woodmiser. Doug told me, he says, well, he says, you can run it without it. It's okay, it's fine. And you know, what it will do is it will be putting 14 and a half volts from the alternator, because that's what the alternator charges the battery at is 14 and a half volts, usually 14.3 to 14.5 volts on most alternators. When they start getting weak, they drop into the 13.8, 13.5. Uh, they still work, but your electronics are really designed to run, you know, at 12 volts or that 14. That's when your computer starts sensing that there's an issue when the voltage, the input voltage starts to drop. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. But anyways, that solenoid will work perfectly without that resistor in there. Just cut the resistor out that's broke and twist the wires together and everything should work fine. And in fact, it did, okay? The, the, the diode didn't matter about the diode. The diode was just there, you know? It was burned out, completely burned off. And uh, that all resulted from me shorting out the battery, the positive terminal to that stud uh, where the wing nut goes and holds the shield on. So, when I was done talking with Doug and buying the parts and pieces, I bought, well, here's the remains of the resistor here. 
okay? And I bought this guy here, which is the filter for the, the lubricant. Uh, and I, I guess this got left on the floor. When I did that, it actually burned out this mega fuse as well. Now this mega fuse is 225 amp. Yeah, 225 amp mega fuse, which runs the AccuSet. It cooked that thing because the wrench seized, fa froze fast to the damn stud. Well, it cooked that thing. I had a spare, so I replaced it. Now, when I got all those parts ordered, Doug says, listen, I'm gonna patch you over to uh, electronics, electronic engineering or diagnostics. I was like, okay. So I'm almost 100% certain he said Jason or Justin, Justin. Well, anyways, on the video that I posted where I had said Justin, there was a fellow who was really upset that I had done this because his name was Justin. And I guess he felt that he was gonna get in trouble for this video. And he kept going on and on and on. And I got sick and tired of listening to him uh, or reading his comments because he just kept commenting. He says, well, I've got this record and I've got that record. And finally, I says, well, if you've got all these records, you know who I talk to. Because if you know I talked to Doug at a certain amount of time, and you know that I bought this mill on the, that date, and you know that I've ordered bands and parts and pieces like this oh, through all this time, you also have the record of when I spoke to Justin. Well, he said in one word after I said that, or typed that, he typed in one word a name, Jason. So apparently I talked or spoke with Say, say this properly, I spoke with a man by the name of Jason. I'm pretty sure I heard Justin because that's what was written down, Justin. Uh, I'm okay with that, you know. Uh, if, you see, maybe a lot of you don't know, I wear hearing aids, you see them? And that day, I didn't have my hearing aids in, the day that I spoke with them. That was not on video when I spoke with him. I wish I had put it on video because I would have said the man's name, but I didn't videotape it. But that's neither here nor there. I don't, it doesn't really matter. If the man's name is Jason, Jason at Woodmiser, and I believe Indiana, I'm probably wrong according to this other fellow, but if this man's name was Jason, he is a jerk. Uh, I'm just gonna say it, he's a jerk. Uh, what he said to me, and I can go through it, was he said to me, he says, you've got a dead short in that battery. I'm like, okay, I don't think so. Uh, he went on to tell me that because I leave my mill outside that these things happen, uh, corrosion happens. I tried to tell him that I don't leave my mill outside and anybody that watches this channel knows that this mill lives in this building. This is where it's at. It doesn't come out. I don't take it out for any reason other than to use it. And I haven't used it in two years. The last thing I milled on it was red cedar. And we had a rainstorm coming. So I just said to hell with it. I'm just gonna throw it in here. I didn't even blow it off that day. But you can see it's dry red cedar and that was two years ago two years ago all right so two years has been sitting in this building there are no mice in this building as you can see there are some antique cars in here model a 25 model t and a 27 chevrolet coupe and over there is a 1978 oldsmobile cutlass supreme that was my Aunt Beth's, it still is my Aunt Beth's, my Aunt Beth's first car. And of course there's a Kubota over there. Uh, if there's mice, they're gonna go for these antique cars. They're not gonna go to this mill. There's nothing in this mill to eat. So he keeps going on. This guy kept going on. He says, well, you got mice somewheres or you know, there's vibration. And then I went on to tell him that there was, I think I told him there was 116 hours on it. It's, it's saying 120. I did leave it run for about a half an hour once I got the battery on. And uh, anyways, he says, well, I don't know what to tell you, sir. He says, I can't hold your hand and, and uh, help you fix it because I'm not there. 
I'm like, well, you can go through it. Well, he says, did you check your circuit breakers? I says, well, yes, I did. These are the circuit breakers he told me to touch. This one, this one, this one, this one, which they're all okay. There's nothing wrong with those circuit breakers. They were fine. Uh, you know, he says, well, you can, you're going to have to do a test on it. I says, well, okay, what test is that? He says, well, you're going to have to disconnect your negative terminal, get a voltage meter, hook the voltage meter to the frame somewhere and to the battery and or hook it to the, the wire and the battery and read the voltage. If it reads if it reads 12 volts like I suspect it will, uh, you've got a dead short somewhere and you're going to have to track it down. I says, well, where's the most common place for it to, uh, to have that problem? He says, I can't tell you where the most common place is. You're just going to have to look for it. And he just got real snippy in the attitude. I'm like, well, okay, so you really can't help me then. He says, no, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, sir. There's just nothing I can do for you. And it's like, this thing wasn't outside. There are no mice in here. It has 116 hours, which it has 120 hours on it. I think it was more like 120, 119 point something because it's clicked over to 120. I said, it, doesn't, it just doesn't have the hours on it to have a vibration wear through the, the lines or the wires anywhere. And there is an issue here, right here, these here, these connectors here, these connectors will corrode from sitting. And I had this happen to me before. And all you do is this. See, they're not gold-plated connectors. None of them are gold-plated. They didn't use gold-plated connectors. And all you do is you take it off, you tighten, you clean it up a couple times, you go back and forth a couple of times, to make sure it's tight, and Bob's your uncle. So if that wasn't connected, this would come on and then it would say error and there's nothing you can do to uh, straighten out your errors or anything here. You know, you would just have to be, you would just, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't, you couldn't clear the errors there because the wire wouldn't be right. So I had already told him that I did that and it wasn't that problem. And he said, do it again. Uh, I did it again. He wasn't even helping me. He just said, just do that again. If it doesn't work, then it's something else. And, and I don't know what to tell you. I said, well, give me your name and so I can call you back if I get, you know, if I can't find this thing or if it's something else. He says, well, all right, I'll give you my name, but it doesn't mean I'm going to talk to you. And every time I tried to explain what had happened with the battery, he would interrupt me. So I don't even think he ever even heard what what happened in the first place. So I was thoroughly disgusted with them and I went through the wires. I went through this, this chain link here, you know, you lift this up and, um, you know, these get broken. You see right here, they're broke out, these little guys here. And that happens when a log or something comes back and I don't really like them, but, uh, you know, you can replace them. There's, there's a way to do it. I just haven't figured it out or really cared to because all they do is really just protect the wires that go inside there. And it keeps them in a nice gradual loop so that they don't pinch and break and get caught on stuff, which is nice. So I went through all of those, and of course there's wires here, and then the transponder here, which I had problems with that when I had the little gold connector problem over there. Um, everything. I went through every single thing to try and figure this out. Now, he never told me about the other breakers and i found those by my own design really right here it says breakers located inside control box remove lower front panel to access and sure enough this guy right here this guy right here was popped i pushed that button and everything straightened right out so i wanted to call him back and I was really pissed off. And it's a good thing I didn't get a hold of him anyway. But I tried to call him back and then I tried to call Doug back. I couldn't get a hold of either of them. So I just let it go. And I wasn't gonna make the video anyway. But there you go. So this video is for a guy by the name of Jason in electronics at Woodmiser, I believe in Indiana. And uh, I, I just think you're a jerk and you need to get your people skills uh, you know, honed a little bit because I'm not stupid. I don't abuse my stuff. Uh, 
uh, I don't use it as much as I should, or maybe I shouldn't even have bought the thing for $50,000, you know. But anytime I need something, I have it. And uh, that's what I wanted it for. And uh, I'm going to be using it. And I'm going to be enjoying it. I do know how to run it. I have never hit the deck plate. I, I'm technically not a Sawyer yet, you know, because I haven't hit these with the saw blade. I haven't hit this with the blade. <laughs> I'm, I'm really anal, you know, and they says, oh, within the, in the first 20 hours, you're going to hit that. And uh, I have been quite fortunate that I haven't hit anything with it, and I'm happy. Uh, so other than that, Wood Miser Company has been great. Uh, anytime I do have a problem or question with the parts and stuff, Doug or someone else in the parts department, I think I've always talked to Doug. And I have bought several pieces. I just haven't really, you know, there's bits and pieces. Like right now I need to change out my water lubricant line. But other than that, I think the Wood Miser Company is great. I just had a really bad experience with the guy with electrical. He's a condescending jerk. And I don't think he needs to be there. If he's going to be a condescending jerk, I really don't think he needs to be working at a company um, like Woodmiser. You want to be a condescending jerk? Go, go work for like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Bank of America. Be a credit card asshole, you know, because whenever you got a problem with them, you, you get a condescending jerk. And uh, that's just the way that is. And uh, anyways, yeah, I guess that's just me. It's just me and my story here. And uh, that fellow Justin at Wood Miser, I apologize for using your name, uh, but you should have been a little bit smarter in the way you uh, commented because you could have just said, hey, my name's Justin. I work at Wood Miser. It wasn't me. I have all the records. You spoke to a guy by the name of Jason. And life would have been fine. It wouldn't have been, this guy needs to correct everything. I don't need to correct everything because I, I actually wrote down Justin because I, I couldn't hear. I can't hear. There's a lot of noise going on on this farm anyway, but whatever. I'm not making excuses. Uh, so there it is. Uh, if you want a good sawmill, if you're looking for a good sawmill, this is it, man. This thing works really good. There's only one thing that I would change on this mill to make it better. And that is on the automatic board return. If you look at the LT70, which is what I should have bought, there's these little guides. There's these little guides that keep the board straight so that they don't fly off to the side. And that's what happens. When you got the automatic board return, it'll come and it'll hit right here and deflect to the back. Well, there's these little things that kind of just keep the board straight and come back for the automatic board return. Especially when you're working by yourself. It's a lot easier to have that. I haven't manufactured one yet But I will and then you know when I get going on this thing again So stay tuned for wood miser videos um, Yeah, like I said, I think the I think the wood miser mill is second to none the best out there I know there's a lot of people that say the north woods is better. I don't see it uh, Timber King forget it. I Don't like the owner of the company I think the guy's a condescending jerk, and that's really the other reason why I went with Woodmiser was because the Timber King, he was like blaming every problem that could ever happen to him on Woodmiser, which tells you right there that there's a lot of jealousy going on. And if you don't believe me, go to Timber King's website and just listen to the guy. Oh, that, that mono thing, you know? It's like, get the hell out of here. Anyways, have a nice one.